feet as though dead. I don't know if he faints smooth out, but what he does is he recognizes that this one, like a son of man, is way bigger and more awesome and more powerful than me, and he gets the grip. I kind of think he fainted. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not. And this is how we know that it's Jesus. I'm the first and the last, the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. Look at what he says about himself. I'm the first and the last. The Alpha and the Omega. By the way, he's already said that earlier in this chapter. The beginning and the end. The one who was alive, who died and has risen again, alive forevermore. Never going to die again. Nobody else in all of history fits that description except for Jesus Christ. And so he is seeing Jesus. And I really like this. I have the keys of death and Hades. Jesus is saying there that he owns death and Hades. Death and hell have no power over Jesus Christ. And let me just say this. For those who are in Jesus Christ, death and hell have no power either. He owns them. That's what it means that he's got the keys. And then he gives John, again, this, this commission. Write, therefore, the things that you've seen, those that are and those that are to take place after this. Some people see this or see in this, verse 19, an outline for the book of Revelation. And it may be. I'm not, I wouldn't argue with, with anybody about that. Um, I'm not completely sure that it is. But on its surface, what it says is, Write the things that you have seen that are right now and that you're going to see after this. As for the mystery, and now he's going to explain some things to us. I'm not going to explain everything, but he's going to explain a couple of things. The seven stars that you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. All right. Let me get caught up with my notes here. First off, let's talk about the angels. The, the, the stars in his right hand, those seven stars, are the angels of the seven churches. So does this mean that each congregation has its own angel? I, I don't know. I don't know if that's what that means or not. For sure. But what it does mean is, and, and I, I want us to, to recognize this and to not miss it, God holds the angels, or Jesus holds the angels in his right hand. The angels, remember, they are, well, let's just look at the definition in, in Hebrews. All angels, are not all angels, ministering spirit, spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. Angels are glorious beings. They're amazing beings. They are spiritual beings, but they have a mission, and their mission is to serve those who are inheriting salvation. Now, who are the people who are inheriting salvation? Christians, right? It's, it's, it's you and me. Angels, their, their role is to, obviously, to serve God, but to serve and to minister to you and me as as. Believers, And so, recognize again, where are the angels in this revelation? In Jesus' hand, right? He holds the angels that serve Him and serve the church in His hand. But then you've got the lampstands. And I really want to key in for just a minute on these, these lampstands because they're vitally important. Again, they're this article... In the temple, uh, which is under the old covenant, the place where Yahweh dwells on earth. Now, by this time, this would have been in the 90s AD, the temple no longer exists. It has been destroyed back in 70 AD. 
But they would have understood golden lampstands. And especially when Jesus comes right out and says, hey, these are the churches, this would have been the place, the, the light of the world, the place where God's presence dwells. Okay, that's important to remember. The Lord, he, the temple now is the church. We, the church is where the, the spirit of the Lord dwells. By the way, that's part of the reason why this is so vitally important is because God's present in us and we come together and it's it's powerful and it's special. It's, it's holy. This, this assembly is holy. So Jesus, I love this. Jesus is, is giving a message, right? John is receiving a message. And again, it's a message not just for John, but it's, it's a message for John to share with others. Write down, he tells you twice, write down what you're seeing. But understand, the medium is part of the message. It's not just write down and share what you're seeing. But the fact that the risen Lord Jesus is standing in the midst of the lampstands with the seven stars in his hand, that's part of the message as well. And, and, and really the message is this, and, and we're going to look at these implications, but Jesus Christ is awesome. And he cares deeply. He is in the midst of and cares deeply about his church. His bride, you and me. So let's talk implications. The first is Jesus is awesome. Ooh, this picture of the risen Lord Jesus. It compels us, like John, to fall down on our faces in adoration. Jesus is amazing. Now, we're going to see over in Revelation 4, Jesus portrayed like a lamb, a, a lamb that has been killed. But most of the pictures that we see of Jesus, first off, Jesus no more is, uh, is lamb. He is risen. He is powerful. He is awesome. But I want to say this. We need to worship the Lord Jesus with every part of our being. He is worthy. He is awesome. He is all powerful. He is the beginning and the end. He owns uh, death and hell. He is worthy of our worship. And, and so, I just want to remind you that as we come together, we need to be giving it our all as we worship the Lord. We need to not be just going through the motions. Jesus is present in his church and he is worthy of every bit of who we are and every bit of the, the adoration and the praise that we can give him. By the way, though, this is not the only place where we worship the Lord, right? I mean, it's powerful, it's important, it is holy ground. And we need to give it our all when we're together. But we need to understand that we don't, for too long, Christians have compartmentalized their lives and been like, okay, let's go to worship. Okay, we got that time card punched for that hour, and now let's just go live life. And even while we're here, we're thinking about what we're going to do out there. Jesus doesn't make those distinctions. What we do here is worship, and it's vitally important. But understand, when we're out there, it's to be worship as well. When we go to work, uh, when we go to school, when we go out to, to eat. You know, they say that Christians are some of the, the worst people to wait on. That's what uh, people at, at restaurants say about Christians on Sunday after church. Well, shame on us. Now, surely that's not anybody here. But, but when we go to eat, and somebody's serving us. Let's remember that we're worshiping, we're worshiping somebody. This is what Paul says in Colossians. Whatever you do, that, that pretty much covers it, right? Whatever you do, 
in word or deed. Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. And so worship is not something that ends here at, you know, 11.30 or 11.45 if Rodney gets going too much. Worship is life. And Jesus is worthy of it. Would, would you agree with me? Jesus is awesome. And Jesus cares deeply about his church. Two things here tell me that Jesus cares deeply about his church. First is, he gives John this commission. He's giving him a message to write to who? To, to the church, right? And again, not just to those seven churches, but to his church, his bride. They desperately need to hear the message that Jesus is revealing to John for John to pass on to those churches. We desperately need to hear the message that Jesus gives to John and passes on to the church. Jesus cares deeply about his church. The other thing, and I, I, I don't think I'm reading too much into this, the other thing that tells me that Jesus cares deeply about his church is his, his position in this vision. And it's not, it's not just a vision. I believe John is seeing the risen Lord. Where is he located? In the midst of the lampstands. What do the lampstands stand for? The church. Jesus, the risen Lord Jesus, is in the midst of his church. His bride. His bride. Jesus cares deeply about his bride. Listen, if you've ever you ever experienced a wedding day, and, and, and particularly haven't experienced it as, as a bride, but I've experienced it as a groom, seeing my bride, her dad escorting her down the middle of these, all these people that, that we love. She wasn't paying attention to those people, though. And I sure wasn't paying attention to her dad. <laughs> I had eyes for the one that was about to be my bride. Jesus looks at us the same way. He cares deeply about his church. And now, let me just preach for a minute here. I know y'all are thinking we've been preaching for 30 minutes. And let me step on maybe your toes, certainly on mine. If Jesus cares so deeply about the church, maybe we ought to care deeply about the church too. Would you agree? See, there's some implications here. If Jesus cares that deeply about the church, what, what does my time say about how much I care about the church? What's, what's my wallet say about how much I care about the church? What do my talents say that I care about the church? We, we miss, I, I grew up thinking that church was something we had to do. It was like a duty or an obligation. And when I say church, understand the calling is not here. We, we describe as faithful somebody that attends worship service regularly. That is not a biblical definition of faithfulness. Okay? It's so much deeper than that. He, he is not. He did not die for us to come here and just participate. This is not what he died for. And this is not what He calls us to. He calls us to something so much bigger. So much deeper. So much more powerful. A yoking together with Him and with each other. That transcends an hour on Sunday morning and, and maybe, you know, if you're really holy, an hour on Wednesday night, right? It's not about this as important as this is. It's about life and it's about our relationships and it's about... It's about being intimate with Him and with each other. Okay. 
We need to care deeply about the church because the Lord cares deeply about the church. And we need to see the fact that we get to be church. It's not, it's not a place we go. It's not something we do. It, it's our identity. That's a privilege. It's a gift. We don't deserve it. And the Lord don't need us, okay? I mean, as great as we think we are, He doesn't need any of us. But He chooses us. And He invites us into a relationship with Him and with each other. Listen, I don't know what our future holds in this world. I don't know what it holds in your, your life and in your family. Here's what I do know. I, I mean, I do know this. There's going to be problems, there's going to be chaos, and there's going to be difficulties. Jesus promised us, in this world you will have troubles. But he also said, take heart, I've overcome the world. And this, this passage reminds us of that. He's got the keys of death and Hades, right? He owns them. Here's, here's what I know. Jesus is sovereign. He reigns over all kingdoms. And His kingdom is everlasting. It will never be defeated. And as we see events going on around us, may we remember that. May we keep our focus on Him. The church is the people through which He is accomplishing His mission on earth. And we get to, it's not a have to, we get to be a part of it. So may we give it our all because He gave His life for us. After I wrote this, this sermon this week, I think it was actually yesterday morning, uh, somebody, one of you actually, had shared on Facebook about this song called He's in the Room. And I, I wasn't familiar with that song, so I went and listened to it. And, and I would encourage you to do the same. It's, it's pretty good. But the message of the song is essentially when we have eyes to see that He's here. But when, 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 when we take our eyes off of what's going on around us and put them on Him, it makes all the difference. The apocalypse, the revelation is the revealing that he's here in the room. May we never forget it. <clears throat> Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for revealing yourself to John in a powerful way and giving him this commission. And, and we, here 2,000 years later, get to be the beneficiaries of that. And Lord, I just ask that we not just see the words of this book. I ask that you help us to see you. For we live in a messed up world. And, and it's not just messed up out there. It's messed up in us. Our lives are chaotic. They're a mess. And they can only be made right by you putting it back together. And so Lord, help us to see you. Help us to care deeply about your bride. And help us to just press in with every bit of our being because you are so awesome. We love you, Lord, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand and sing. I just want to invite you always. The invitation is open. The ministry, if you have needs, make them known. If, if they need to be made known publicly. Uh, let's let's stand the same together.
learn more about how we should live our lives. Father, we know that you have established the church uh, as a place for all of us together to be your body. And, and we recognize, Father, that we should be in that type of relationship with your son, that we are one. Father, we, we need to realize how much he cares for us, but Father, please help us to understand how much we need to care for one another. Father, thank you for the relationships that we build with one another. We know that they have been modeled through the life of your son, understanding the importance of his blood and his sacrifice, his death, knowing, Father, that because of that, we have a hope of eternity. Father, again, thank you and thank you for your son. It's in him we pray. Amen. Oh, I still to write music. Thanks for being here. Singing loud. Did I sing loud? But not, not, no, really not. It didn't come across as loud as normal to me, but I can pick up and try to follow you anyway. You hear that sub bass, That's right. right. <laughs> Good job. Hey, thank you, brother. Don't you think? Yeah. It was a good time. We're, we're fixing to have World War III, though. It's already started. It's already started. He's too bad we got that key. Hey, but remember who's on the front.